How do you know that somebody who does not have visible abs is 20%? That is a heck of a conclusion to jump to. The amount of young lifters progress this man has single-handedly ruined, there should be a class action lawsuit. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. I didn't want to do this. I was prompted to doing this by the guys in the Discord server. If you want to join that server, become a patron or channel member, $5 and up tier. I am not going to be posting a lot of content, guys, the next couple weeks because the move is about to happen. I got to travel back and forth and pack stuff and it's going to be a mess. So I figured, why not react to this? Haven't done one of these in a while. I haven't watched this yet. This is a live reaction, but I can probably guess what he's going to say. But this video is called Hard Gainer 101, Hard Gainer University. Because we all know, based on Greg Doucette's past comments, he's a great resource for hard gainers and skinny guys and girls who have trouble building muscle. Look down at your stomach right now. That's right, look down. If you can't see any abs, you're eating enough. Oh boy, we're uh, officially 10 seconds in the video. He didn't say if you can't see your abs, you're fat. So I guess he's changed the wording a little bit. Oh God, this is gonna be great. We're gonna be going over the five biggest hard gator muscle building mistakes. Your ability to add muscle like most things, it forms a bell curve where some people find it very easy while others find it very hard. Yeah, bell curves can explain a lot of things, but he doesn't understand what that actually means. We refer to these people on the left side of the bell curve as being hard gainers. And many people are gonna say, there's no such thing as a hard gainer. They just don't eat enough or they don't have the right training program and so on, but this is not true. That's largely true. Most hard gainers just don't eat enough or they say they eat a lot. Oh, I eat 3,500 cows, bro. Most of them eat like 2,000 a day, maybe a little bit more. Especially, I tell you young guys all the time, man, if you're young and active, go to the gym. Maybe you also play a sport. If you have a job, you're on your feet all day. You have to eat a lot. Like, there's no way around this. Unless you want to indulge in some trend bologna sandwiches. We're going to start with tip number one. Not training long enough, nor with enough consistency. Do you ever notice that most hard gainers are beginners? I mean, that's a fair point, but, you know... That's kind of a given. It takes one to two years of consistent, dedicated training to even find out- Is that a guillotine press? Whether or not you're a hard gainer or not. And does that not show just how important a consistent and stick to this attitude really is? You gotta go for more than a month before you can start complaining. I think everybody can agree on that, right? Mistake number two, you're training too easy. Oh boy. You watch a bunch of natural lifters get up on YouTube saying, if you train to failure, if you try too hard, you're not gonna grow because your brain it can't recover. There's too many neural adaptations. You're overtraining. You're convinced to half-ass it in the gym. And so you half-ass it. Then you wonder, why am I not making the results? And you say, ah, it's because I'm natural. All those people with muscle, all of them are on PDs. Truth is, they're not. Yeah, they probably are. The overwhelming majority of people that are natural on social media, especially if they say it in their bio, if somebody says natural in their bio, you can pretty much take it to the bank that they're not natural. Also, the guys who put the trident emoji, the genetics emoji, but this is vintage Schmucky the Clown. You see what he did? He basically is saying how people on YouTube will explain concepts like reps in reserve, RPE, and I've said this too, guys, you cannot always take everything to failure, especially if you want to focus on getting stronger, but he turns it into, oh, well, they just say to not train hard, and then you're going to half-ass it. No one ever said to half-ass your training. He just condenses it into this one little, essentially red herring argument he makes. Oh, well they say to apply nuance to your failure threshold. So that means half-ass everything, right? Ugh. How hard? Harder than freaking last time. Can you be more specific, Coach Greg? Yes, harder than the time before. Very specific, Coach. So the only point that I can see him actually making here is the fact that many people in commercial gyms especially they do half-ass their training. I would argue the majority of people that are watching him, my channel, whoever the hell else it is online, they're probably pushing themselves and I can vouch for this based on clients I have, consultations I've done over and over. Most people are training too hard. Now, does that necessarily mean that they're lifting too heavy per se? Not necessarily, but most people are doing 
too much volume. You guys should see these consultations I do every time. Six days a week, push, pull, legs, bra which I'm pretty sure he recommends to do push-pull legs six days a week or something similar. They have a laundry list of exercises they do. Some guy just sent me his plan. He's doing like a dozen exercises on a push day. Click the video in the top corner to see like a push-pull legs horror story that I recapped. So these guys are doing excessive volume. They're taking everything to failure. And I'm sure based on the introduction of this video, he's gonna tell them don't bulk because you're somehow gonna get fat or something. Combine those three factors excessive volume, constant failure, and under eating, you're never gonna make gains. Hard gainers are those who have been to the gym long enough trying and are not making their results. And so do you actually fit into that category? Yes, Greg, your audience fit that profile very well. Third biggest mistake, your diet's crap and shit sucks. Uh-oh, here we go. What does a shitty diet look like? Well, for some people it could be not eating enough. And if you're... Really? There we go, Greg. A few moments later. If you can't see any abs, you're eating enough. Oh God. All right, so as we discussed with the intro, this is basically his new and improved version. If you can't see your abs, you're fat. He's kind of toned it down a bit because I called him on the bullshit initially. By the way, Editor Steve, where are you at, bro? Editor Steve, you were gonna talk all this big stuff in my comment section. I've never seen you since, Editor Steve. Where are you at, buddy? There are so many lifters, men and women both who are skinny, but they do not have visible abs. And his fanboys always come into the comments with the same thing. Well, technically, if you can't see any ab definition, you must be 20% or higher body fat, which means you need to cut. No, that is spoken like a true beginner who doesn't know what they're talking about. That statement is preposterous. I fit this criteria myself whenever I started lifting. I have guys who send me pictures with very similar scenarios. I was like 152 pounds soaking wet. I still did not have visible abs. Why is that happening? Because you do not have the muscle built to reveal the abs even at those lower body fats. So somebody could be 12% body fat as a guy, still not have visible abs. Macy, shut up! They need to put on muscle. This is the skinny fat dilemma. I'm pretty sure he gives the same advice if you're skinny fat which remember the first word there is skinny. Skinny fat essentially just means that you have some body fat in unsightly areas, the chest, the love handles, etc. You need to build muscle. And these guys who promote the recomp and the main gaining, they are going to lead you to believe that you're gonna build all this muscle and get a shredded waistline simultaneously. If you do not have anabolics in your arsenal, that's not going to happen, guys. Very, very small fraction of genetically elite people. And again, actual genetic freaks not the youtubers who have elite genetics who have been on gear since they were 16. simple if you don't see abs you're probably eating enough does that make sense no it does not make sense greg you're thinking oh i don't eat enough i can't put on any muscle if you're above 20 percent body fat there it see 20 percent. his fans parrot the same nonsense 20 percent. how do you know that somebody who does not have visible abs is 20 percent? that is a heck of a conclusion to jump to that's really ignorant. You've been told, eat big to get big. The truth is, if you eat big, you're gonna get big and fat. Uh, not necessarily. If they eat your diet, Greg, which is a bunch of processed junk food and added sugar and stuff, yeah, they might gain a lot more fat than they should. If they eat primarily whole foods and do a moderate surplus, they're gonna probably be fine. You can't just shove in more fast food and take weight gainer shakes, eating candies and chips and think, oh, I'm now gonna build muscle. Again, guys, do you see what's happening here? Fast food, mass gainer shakes, candies and chips. Nowhere does he mention eating just regular, basic, healthy food. I'm sure he's gonna promote the cookbook at the end of this. He might do it in the next few seconds. The quality of the food you're eating is paramount. Yeah, and you know what is lacking in that severely? Your cookbook, Greg. You should be aiming to eat four to five meals a day. There it is, I caught it. Eat from all four food groups. What are all four food groups? You need to take in the correct micronutrients, vitamins, antioxidants, and so on. That is correct. And your cookbook lacks those things in many cases because you promote very low fat diets and high carb diets. So you can continuously stuff fiber in your mouth to satiate your massive appetite because you're a sugar addict. 
You drink what, six to eight Diet Cokes a day? Forget going keto or carnivore. Sure, it worked for Tristan Lee, but last I checked, you're not a five foot two Asian with freaky genetics. Yeah, Tristan Lee is only relying on his genetics. It's not like he's been on gear since he was what, 10 years old? And if you are overweight, Perhaps you're skinny fat, you've got a lot of extra body fat. Skinny fat is not overweight. Oh my god, dude. The amount of young lifters progress this man has single-handedly ruined. There should be a class action lawsuit. Try eating in a slight calorie deficit, get leaner, and build muscle at the same damn time. If you're actually overweight, that's possible. Somebody who is skinny fat is normal range BMI. Like I said, they just hold body fat in unsightly areas. If you cut as a skinny fat lifter, this is a metaphor I've made before, you're essentially robbing a gas station. There's nothing worth stealing. You can bulk, this makes these people lose their minds, but it's true, you can bulk your way into more visible abs with a proper training program and a nutritionally dense diet. It's not gonna happen in a month or two, but over six months a year, maybe a little longer, it's definitely possible. And even if you don't bulk into abs, you can bulk, build the muscle, which you want anyway, then you can cut relatively quickly and the abs are gonna start showing. If you cut to get abs when you're skinny fat, you look like a gremlin. You look like the little dude from the Lord of the Rings. You're gonna cut down as a skinny fat lifter. You're barely gonna have visible abs. You're gonna have even smaller muscles than when you started and you're gonna hate how you look. So you're gonna spend all that time cutting just to realize you need to bulk when you could have just bulked from the onset. And number four, the fourth biggest mistake, ego lifting with bad form. Yes, that is correct. The first bike race I ever did, the Jeu d'Acadie. The what? I'm going to use the biggest gear on my bike the entire race because that's the biggest gear. I'm going to go the fastest. He has used the biggest gear for a long time and he did get caught in a bike race using the gear. And sure enough, I don't win the race and I get off the bike, legs are cramping. Soon learned that is not the way. And so I learned how to properly shift gears and use the bike's gearing to my advantage. All right, I'm not gonna watch what he says on this point because everybody can agree ego lifting is not smart. Click the video in the top corner. I have my own video explaining all the signs that you actually are ego lifting because it's much more subtle than just, oh, just maxing out mindlessly. And number five, the biggest mistake that hard gainers make of all, of all time, they don't watch Coach Greg. I'm going to close my laptop because I don't need to watch that anymore. Uh, Rewatch what I just told you guys. If you think watching Coach Greg is going to fix your gym problems, you're mistaken. I have numerous dozens, hundreds of testimonials from ex-viewers of Greg Doucette. You can find this stuff on Reddit too. I have other videos relating to this. This man is not going to help you get out of your skinny fat stage, novice purgatory stage, any of this stuff, guys. Guys like Greg Doucette, the advice he gives, he's going to keep you stuck in novice purgatory, as I call it, for way longer than you should be there. You can make serious progress, size and strength, body composition changes. You can do this, but it's going to take time. And if you listen to his advice, it's going to take you two, three, four, five, six, ten years longer than it should actually take you to get results. I know you're not going to listen to me like I said, but I'm just trying to warn you. So if you're actually open to making serious gains and you're not just going to listen to the guy who has the most subscribers, give what I say a shot and you might be surprised at what happens. But this has been it for me. Thank you guys for checking in as always. Big shout out as always to the Patreon supporters and the channel members i don't know when the other content's gonna come out i gotta do the show day vlog i got a bunch of other stuff coming up too just be patient okay one man show here but thank you very much for the support and i will catch you guys next time